Good morning, folks. We've got weather, a volcano eruption, the next mission set to study space weather effects on Earth, and some Taurus jet plasma cosmology. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star quiet once again. The southern coronal hole, pretty much the only feature of note on the Earth-facing half. No sunspots means no solar flares, and the solar wind intensity at Earth crept slightly higher until a few hours ago, but even still. Remained at relatively moderate range, geomagnetic conditions remain calm and quiet. Let's go next to the Himawari satellite. This is the ash overlay, and we're going to take a moment next to zoom in on the islands north of Japan, running up to Kamchatka, Russia. Right in the island chain there, we find a pluming out of strong return. We do indeed have a solid volcano eruption near the Kuril Islands. This is long wave radiation return here, and then we're on to the dust content where you can really see the volcanic plume distinguishing itself from the clouds with its brightness and heat and chemical differences, pulled hard out to sea. Up next, we're going to Hawaii. Record heat is settling in there. Meanwhile, to the southwest, strong storms set their sights on Australia and bring record cold temperatures to parts of the Oceanian continent. We need to look at tonight's forecast in the U.S. because South Carolina is under the gun and so are the central states. Tornadic behavior, hail, flash flooding, you know the drill. So folks, there is a ton of excitement about the upcoming punch mission right now. It should be able to give us the best views of the corona and magnetic field behavior ever on our star using large-scale data input constellation orbits that allow different angles on the critical events. But while punch is getting the glory, it won't be launching from Vanderberg on its own. Tracer's mission should be flying up in tandem. Not only will it focus on the cusp where the solar particle energy comes into the atmosphere most easily, but this should be able to dictate the numbers of the first globally relevant particle forcing models of climate effect through the global electric circuit. AGW scientists' worst nightmare. Let's use Hubble to step out to the cosmos with a look at the starburst galaxy IC10 next. Not the most creative name, but one of the more active and star-producing regions in the entire local cluster, the 50 or so galaxies closest to the Milky Way. So in the world of cosmology, you can barely go a day now without someone finding a reason to inflict changes upon the accepted paradigm of dark matter. Boss and Sloan Digital Sky Surveys combined for this one, which was an international collaboration out of China, Japan, and Yale University. Of course, having a Taurus jet in the center of a celestial mass takes the place of a chaotic gravitation, including its sculpting effects on the surrounding regions. They are hoping your eyes can resolve the faint making out of a Taurus jet around the star R. Doradus. Of course, what we see at the energetic stellar instances is scaled up further to more organized galaxies like the Milky Way. We have done a lot on the Taurus at the center of our galaxy, and let's add to that today with the discovery of yet another layer, a cool disk around the center of the galaxy. And interestingly, although the cold donut sits outside and around the inner rings, its cooler temperature and lower emission made it virtually invisible to us now, while the hotter interior plasma had stolen the show for years. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, we've got our Fly on the Wall podcast as we do every Saturday, coming up in a few hours. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.